What's going on guys? Welcome back to my video. So today we got the 24 Duramax in here today Like I talked about last week I want to get the first full oil change done and do a PCV reroute on this truck I talked about that at about a thousand miles I, I just went ahead and I dropped the oil got that all changed out today I want to do a full service which is doing the filter and oil along with the PCV reroute because I have some more time with this truck I'll dive into it a little bit more, but if you guys follow the channel, you know the full basics of the PCV reroute, but this is for people that, you know, you're just getting a Duramax game and maybe just picked up a 24 or you picked up a new Duramax in general. This is some stuff that I recommend doing to a new truck to prolong the life of it. Just with the turbo being gummed up and all that stuff from running all that oil from the PCV back through the intercooler. It's not the greatest design in the world, but... It is what it is, and we're going to go ahead and get that addressed today, along with a full oil change. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into the video, and we'll start getting all the stuff done. Alrighty, so coming under the truck, the first thing we're going to do is take our 15 millimeter wrench. As you can see, right there is the drain plug for the oil pan. And I just took a look around, and the good part is I'm not leaking any kind of oil. I've seen on forums people are really complaining about these 24 trucks leaking oil. It's kind of been a little bit of an issue on the 20s and up. But I've been seeing it a lot on the 24s. Luckily, I don't have that issue. So let me go ahead, break this free. We'll start getting the oil drained. Then we'll hop under the hood and we'll start on the PCV. Okay, so as you can see, we got it draining. Not the cleanest oil in the world, obviously, because we still got the EGR in place. And that's why I want to do this quite a few times. With the truck being brand new, no harm in doing this for, you know, the 70 bucks it's going to cost me. It's worth it 100%. So let me go ahead and get this drained. And then we'll get the oil filter busted off. I want to show you guys the oil filter too. Because this is some stuff I haven't really kind of talked about. It's kind of just common knowledge. But if you're new into the Duramax game, this is some good stuff to know. So let me let this finish draining. Then I'll talk about the oil filter. Okay, so guys, just talking about underneath the truck. This is the difference in the oil filters. This is the correct one for the 20 and up PF26. This is for like your LLYs, LBZs, LMLs, PF2232. But I just want to show you guys how stupid it is what they did with that design. On how much they dropped it down. Which makes no sense. They put a bigger oil cooler, did all this stuff for the oil system just to drop down to a smaller filter, which gives you less filtration. It's kind of dumb. It's not the biggest difference in the world, but you know, at the end of the day, the more filtration you can get, the better. But it just sucks you can't run something like this. I wish someone at some point would kind of come out with something that you can relocate that down there to be able to run a bigger filter. Because even on the first generation L5P to 17 and 19, you can run an even bigger filter. I've seen people run filters like that on there. So, um, kind of sucks, but let's go ahead. We'll get this thrown on and go from there. Coming up top here to the PCV reroute that we're going to be starting, as you can see, right here is the intake horn. The PC, PCV box is down in there, and that's where it connects back to the intake. So, if you want to do this, feel free to. On the 20 pluses, it wasn't really a problem. Some people would claim that it'd throw a NOx code. From what I've seen, never had an issue. But, you know, if you do it and throw us a code, you can always just connect this back. Nothing crazy. So, when you do this, you want to do it when it's hot. The hose is a lot more pliable because it has like this anti tamper stupid ring right here. But what you want to do is just take your screwdriver like this, preferably when it's hot, and then just see how easy that pries up. It might have to wait a little bit like this, but since the truck being hot, it's very easy to do. Keep going like that, maybe one more, and it is off. So you want a long screwdriver for the leverage so you can do it against the intake horn like that. So now what I'm going to do is take my channel locks, open them up a little bit. Sorry if the camera's a little bit shaky, trying to just all one-hand it. You want to come down in here. Because on the box, as you can see in there, it has, let me grab my other flashlight. As you can see down in there, it has the same anti-tamper with kind of ring up top. But again, when it's hot, you can kind of just take this on there and twist it a little bit. That should be enough to budge it free. It did not. Wiring harness on this is a little bit different in here. So you don't have as much room as you do on the 20s, I just noticed, but might need two hands for this, let me see. Yeah, I'm gonna do this two hands, I don't mess it up, but I'll show you guys when I get it rotated here exactly what it looks like. So it's kind of a double-edged sword with this that I forgot to mention, that it's a lot easier to rotate the bottom piece when the hose is harder, when the truck's cold. 
because when it's hot, it just wants to flux like that. When the truck's cold, it'll just rotate all the way around. So I had to take my channel locks and just keep rotating it all the way around until I get it to right to about there, as you can see, so we can go down and out. I'll show you where I'm gonna route it to, but we gotta take this piece off here first so we can get our hose end slid into this. And then all you gotta do is cap the horn right here. Okay, now obviously there's an opening. A three quarter inch cap fits that, or you get like a 15 16 cap. Whatever you can find that will fit on there and work perfectly as long as it's, as long as it's capped and you're not sucking anything in minus through the air filter. So let's get the hose hooked up. I'll show you what that looks like, what I do for that. We'll get it rotted down, zip tied up, and that'll be about it for the PCV route. Okay, so as you can see, I got my three quarter inch cap on there. I'm gonna take my screwdriver and kind of just beat it down as far as it will go. So it does not pop off. That's about as far as it can go down. And now we got a cap on there. Now we try to get the hose set up. Show you where I route it down now. I wanna get the oil filter off first, get that all changed so I'm not working in between two things. But let's hop back around, get the oil filter done, and then we'll uh, wrap the PCV up. Before we go even further, I just realized this filter looks even smaller on this than the 20 filter I just showed you guys above. I wasn't even really kind of looking at it, but it looks a lot thinner. I'm sure this is a different part number, but let me go ahead and get this pulled off and see, because the first time I changed the oil, that's all I did. I just dropped the oil, I didn't change the filter, but we're doing everything today, and I'm almost positive this is a even smaller filter. I, I can't even believe how small that is. But let me go ahead and get this off, and we'll see if somehow we can get the older style filter on here, or see what we can do. Um with getting one to work a little bit better than this small guy. So let me go ahead and get this popped off. So now that we got it off, this is kind of literally the dumbest thing I've ever seen. I can't even believe how small this filter is. This looks like a filter smaller than a car filter, but as you can see for reference, this is the 1719 one, this is the 20 plus one, and this is the 2024 one. Look how small that is. My big oil filter wrench wouldn't even fit on this for reference. That's how small it is compared to my hand. I cannot believe that. And that's kind of ridiculous. But let's see if we get one of these ones to fit on there just for a little bit bigger filter. I cannot believe that. But let's see if it actually works or what we're going to be dealing with on it. But we'll see here in a second what we can get to work. All right, so after looking at it, I'm kind of actually blown away with this filter. I can't believe it. But the surface area for the ceiling might not fit down there on the actual oil filter where it threads onto. But we'll see if we get this to fit without leaking. I'm not exactly sure what's going to work, but give me a minute. I'll run through some options and uh, we'll see what we can do. Let's slide under here and kind of talk about this a little bit. I'm going to do some research later tonight and see what I can actually do. I'm not going to throw a filter back on this right now. Because, like I said, I want to do some research and keep you guys updated for next week's video. But as you can see how small the ceiling surface is for the oil filter. Ridiculous. I have no idea why it's so small. But, I'm going to do some research because kind of the oil filter or the oil cooler kind of looks the same. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can buy this bracket off a 20 plus oil filter. And then maybe, I'm not sure about clearance, if we can run a bigger filter on this. I have no idea. That's literally smaller than a car filter. No idea why it's that small. I'm probably tweaking out about it for no reason. But um, to me, that's kind of ridiculous. With two and a half gallons of oil that this truck holds, you put an oil filter of that small capacity on there. They've already shrunk it down for the 20s. Then for the 24 to shrink it to that small makes no sense at all. But... Um, we'll see what we can do. I'm not going to add any oil right now. I'm kind of let this sit overnight and kind of do some research after this video. Let you know what I get. Let you guys know what I find next week. But that's kind of just the conclusion I came to. All right, so that's about it for this video, guys. After I get this video all edited, I'm going to do my research for sure to see what kind of filter we can run. I'm not going to add any oil to this now. You got to start it. Same thing with the PCV. I'll let that be till next week. We'll get that wrapped up. When I see what I want to do with the fiasco underneath, with this oil filter situation. Hopefully I can just buy that one piece that the oil filter screws into, unbolt it from the oil cooler, and then at that point we can run a larger filter on there. No idea why GM did this, but it wouldn't be GM if they didn't do a new 
redesign and do a stupid little thing like this. So if you guys are new here, be sure to subscribe, like this video, be sure to leave it a big thumbs up, be sure to stay tuned until next week when I see what we can do with this filter situation. But until next time, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Stop this conversation